Hey y'all, so I'm here in my own home workspace to record this for you. Um, I realize many of you may never see my actual face by itself, so hello, this is my face. It's a, it's a face. Um, so we missed a class, and I apologize for that. I um, was freaking out about it a little bit to be able to let you know ahead of time as opposed to causing confusion, so I apologize. Um, my only excuse is that the Detroit airport is not, not a place I would choose to spend that much time. Um, so thank you for your patience on that front. And here's a little bit of what we would usually do had we had that instruction. And this one I'm going to walk through today is what I would usually demo for you um, in person or via Zoom in preparation for a makeup application due date. Now, there's a ferret trying to eat my toes. I realize that there may be some trepidation and some um, uncertainty or even anxiety about trying to turn in your very first project with a class missing, and that is 100% valid. We're not going to um, move the due date, partly because this is not a product-driven grading project, okay? I want to reassure you, it absolutely is not that, and I absolutely am not going to be grading you in any way as if you have had instruction that you have not had, okay? Just to make that perfectly clear, I will be grading you based on what you do have access to, which is this and the classes that we've had so far and the tools in your possession. And what this is, is for me to understand where your baseline of craftsmanship is so that I am then able to essentially temper and sort of uh, curve your grading specific to your personal improvement. So this is my way to get to know where you are as a human and where you are as an artisan. If the answer is, nowhere. If the answer is not far yet, um, if what you're able to do is just try and put forth the effort, that is okay. I promise you for this project, that is absolutely okay. And I'm going to take some time to walk you through it here as well. So we're going to start with the basics. 101. I'm going to go ahead and re remove this hairsman. And I'm going to go ahead and lose my bobby pin, probably. Almost certainly. Ah, here we go. So one of the things that you want to do, should you have hair like me that flops over the face a little bit, is go ahead and give yourself an option to get it out of your face because you are going to be getting all the way up in here and all the way down around the face. Those of you with beards, going to be a slightly different process, but just think about you want to have access to the full perimeter of your face as much as possible. Yes. Now, this is my personal favorite brand of facial moisturizer for anyone who's curious. Um, I like it because it has vitamin C in it, which is really good for, I have some scarring and stuff, um, in earlier points in my life. Um, vitamin C is good for that. And also, it smells like creamsicles, and who doesn't love that? Um, some of you with more sensitive skin may want to get something like the link that I linked in the, um, products document for moisturizer, which is a facial moisturizer that has no scent and is very, very, um, specifically formulated for sensitive skin. So if you are someone with more sensitive skin and you know that like scents and things like that tend to bother you, that's a good option to go with. Now I'm going to do a lot, a fair amount of moisturizer. As you can see, I first put it on my hands, rub them together to warm it up and then kind of started to brush and press it into my skin. I like to get my lips as well. I find that usually moisturizing with regular moisturizer, my lips is a fine way to do it. Um, if you don't want to do that, or if you have moisturizer that maybe doesn't taste or smell so good, um, you might want to go ahead and grab like a chapstick or a lip balm, because when you put makeup over your lips, if they are extra dry and like crackly, which happens, especially as we get into winter, you're going to really want to moisturize them as much as possible beforehand. So by the time you get there, your makeup goes on nicely, which is exactly what we're doing now is causing our makeup to go on nicely by making sure that our skin is as hydrated and flush as possible, which means that we're creating the smoothest canvas for our makeup to go on on top of that it will cling to the best. What happens when we don't moisturize, where's this? I see a spot. Where's my moisture? What happens when we don't moisturize? So <laughs> the skin is weird and it absorbs what it thinks it needs, right? So if we don't moisturize and then we put a creamy product on our face, our skin is going to go, oh my God, moisture. And it's going to try to suck some of that in. It's going to, to that creaminess, your skin is going to go, yes, drink it in. And it's going to leave your product with, with less moisture to it, which means less blending. It's going to change the quality of your product. And it means that your skin is going to be trying to absorb more of that product. And that product is not actually the best thing to go all the way into your skin, right? That's not necessarily the most, the, the best, <laughs> the thing we want, right? 
So the moisturizer acts as a barrier. It causes our skin to be flush to the surface, which means that our skin isn't looking for anything. So it's not going to try to drag those things that it needs hydration and, and nutrients from your makeup products, which means that your makeup products will go on more effectively and more opaquely. Okay. Hoping you're with me so far, as always, feel free to um, ask questions in any way that you feel that you need to. I'm, I will answer as often as I possibly can. I check all of those um, e email and text uh, pretty consistently, so I will do my best. Uh, ha, ha, ha. So now that this has had a sec to set in, you don't want to start applying your makeup while you can still kind of feel active moisture. So my skin, I can still feel a little bit, but it's mostly started to seek, sink, sink in a little bit. And that's what we want to experience. And then once we put it in, we can do like some tappy taps. Get the last of it in. Tappy taps, technical term. So you want to, <laughs> let's talk about the actual products that I have available to me here. I don't have the, uh, the black cream and the white cream that I tried to give you guys. Um, I have in my professional kit, but I try not to sort of cross the flow of my professional and my academic kit, because if I did, I'd end up with one of them being empty accidentally. Da, da, da. Um, and I didn't feel like taking cream products on the plane because... So, this may be pretty useful for those of you that ended up with a little wheel um, instead of the like black, straight, black, flat, black cream palette. Um, because I'm going to be doing some mixing and I'm going to be doing some improvising going to be using a variety of brushes and I will be talking you through why I'm using each brush and each different thing as we go. <sighs> I'm trying to think what else is useful. So many brushes here. Um, I'm going to be, it looks like, honestly, using a <laughs> the dream, a white lipstick <laughs> um, for the white areas of my skull makeup and I'm going to reinforce it with uh, basically white powders. I'll show you. We can see it. He's a little sparkly. And he's not the most opaque item. So some of the things that I will be doing to make it more opaque, you do not necessarily need to do. But you should guide yourself by observing your makeup and what your face and your products are doing together and make your choices based on that, not just by based on watching what I do. Does that make sense? Um, this is going to work. Why you should never... Do what I'm about to do is that lipstick products are really not formulated for the best health of your face. They are, if you think about the difference between like a nice moisturizing cream versus like petroleum jelly, right? Or like Vaseline. They clog the pores. They're a heavy, non porous, um, oily substance that just blocks everything from getting in or getting out. So the stuff underneath starts to build up, the stuff outside gets stuck. It's, it's not ideal, but you're using cream makeups, which means they actually are more similar. That grease paint cream makeup that you have is going to be more similar to this than it is going to be to a regular foundation. So in some ways, it's a good thing. I still just cannot recommend that you ever choose to put colored lipstick on your face in lieu of a body paint product. It's not made for that, um, and it's not going to be the kindest on your skin. Um, and then what I'm going to be using for, uh, for my black is a paint pot, a little black paint pot. Um, this is also a cream, but it's more of a gel-based product, but it does a pretty good, pretty decent, opaque, once I fill it in enough black. He's going to do okay. So those are the two things we're going to be using. I'm going to be a very shiny skull, um, which is the dream, right? <laughs> so now that I have moisturized my face, and it's pretty much all sunk in, and I can actually feel, yeah, it's just like less porous of a surface. It's not drinking stuff in as much anymore. It doesn't want anything. So it's not going to try to get anything from the products that I am using. Um, I'm going to go in with a primer. These help in terms of getting your cream makeup to stay still. If you are a very oily person, you may want to go in with a translucent powder first. That can help a lot. Or a barrier spray, though those are pricier. But if you have a translucent powder already um, of any kind, putting that on underneath a cream makeup can be very helpful. Um, I'm using a mattifying regular skin primer. And all it's going to do create a little bit more barrier again on the hands and I'm rubbing it in to warm it up and then putting it on the face. I washed my hands before this, which is important. You don't want like, you know, your hands from your, your food or the dust from your textbooks or whatever else you've encountered during the day going into your skin. Why we emphasize our skincare so much here is because it actually really does affect the final outcome of our makeup. And as you can see, I'm using swiping motions and then as it dries down, I'm gonna be doing a lot of patting. I'll do the same thing with the actual makeup. And I know about me, 
right here I have a weird little dry spot where stuff always wants to flake up like right here so I'm gonna get that man extra tap tap we love the tap tap um, places you're most likely to need things like powder or primer to get your makeup to hold on you hear all this movement spot right up in here you may have dry patches like I do and then definitely in here up here which can be a separate primer but it doesn't have to be okay I'm gonna go through this step by step I'm gonna try to cap myself at a certain time cap so that I am not um, going so far into this makeup that I'm doing steps beyond what I actually expect of you you are not expected to spend a thousand hours on this you are expected to put forth your best faith effort based on where you are right now today as a makeup human and I also have some of my trusty bruise wheels no white no black <laughs> um this is gonna be super fun so sure uh, da -da -da. I sing when I'm distracted and I'm sorry in advance so the first thing that I'm going to do is the same thing that I've asked you guys to do, which is start to examine your face by feel, right? We can look at our face and that can actually distract us from what exactly our structure, our bone structure, which is the point of this project, is about. So I can look at myself and say, oh, I have a lot here. I have a lot here, right? In my cheeks. My cheekbone is here. We think this is part of my cheekbone. It's not. That's all flesh, right? My cheekbone is up here. And your goal is to be exploring your actual physical face and pointing out where the pieces of your face come together. So I'm going to literally follow with my fingers all of this good stuff. And I'm finding my orbital cavity, which is the actual bone that starts beneath my eyes. And I will say here, what you don't want to do, find it, oh, pull down. See if I pull down and I make a mark, that's where my bone looks now. It moves, right? So I might just be putting a mark somewhere that's not going to actually be where it is. I feel like I just made myself have extra smile lines confirming, I guess. This line in my under eye bags, that is a very accurate line to where my orbital cavity needs to be. You don't have to draw a full line. You could kind of dot it out to help yourself start up. You kind of give yourself a good idea and then I can find this corner right here and then I'm gonna go upward and I feel right there my upper man and it comes down like this and I'm literally following my bone and then it goes down again he my bones are he apparently and you don't want to see, I just instinctively tried to do this to get in there. Don't. Because when it does this and then I drop it, your skin shifts on the bone, right? The other thing that I want to point out around now is, what about symmetricality? We're not trying to match one side of our face perfectly to the other. We're trying to figure out where our own bones actually are. And that means you very well may, and you do actually as a human being, you do have an uneven face, as we all do. I can feel the end of my actual bone. It's right here. Swing, swing, swing. It's in here. Bone on my nose. Because we all have asymmetrical features your features have developed asymmetric okay i'm looking at myself now have developed asymmetrically based on things like does one eye see very slightly better than the other how well we smile what side we sleep on all of that kind of stuff studies clearly show that nobody is perfectly symmetrical and so do not try to match your face to be more symmetrical than it is follow what actually exists do you see how we can actually see in the right light i happen to have a prominent temporal bone so if we look, we can see that bone coming in. So that's an easy one for me. It may not be as easy on you because we all have different bone prominence in different areas. I'm going ahead where I actually find that and I'm finding that little divot of the temporal area. This is very weird to do PS on a phone screen without a mirror. 
You just see how that starts to shape the upper swath of the cheekbone for me? Starting to see where that, that shape is. And you'll notice I haven't actually looked at a reference image yet. Yet, I will. I also notice that this is a prominent bone here. I can feel this versus this in here. So I'm going to go ahead and start marking that out for myself. Do we start to see where the skull is going to happen? Obviously we're not done. But I want you to think about the idea of um, the idea of sketching instead of just drawing, right? You don't have to draw one big confident line. Sketch it in, see where it is, figure out where it actually lives. And we're gonna come back and we're gonna keep adding layers, all right? So my cheekbone, I feel it here to here. It's not here though, even though the fullness of my cheek is. And then I feel it here, here. We're going to be going over this so you don't, don't, the way to spend your time for projects like this, oh no, I missed a chunk there, like that, is not to strive for perfection, it's to strive for layers. Right now I look like a very confused superhero, and I'm kind of here for that, to be honest. It's actually, shwing, kind of, <laughs> now I can feel, <laughs> I can feel where my teeth start to begin underneath my lips, in each of these areas. And I can feel my jawbone right here. Jawbone, the actual bone. I've actually never done this without a mirror before, so it's gonna be fun! Okay. So now, one thing I'm gonna do, which you can choose to do or not choose to do because you're working with cream makeups, but if you happen to have um, a glue stick lying around, one thing that can be really useful, because this area is gonna be white, right? This area is actually where my bone exists. And so that means that I'm going to have to somehow whiten my eyebrow space. So all I'm doing is taking a regular like kid's glue stick. It happens to be purple. It goes on clear. And I'm just running it through my eyebrows. My eyebrows are dark, but not terribly, terribly thick. So this is a pretty smooth process for me. I'm just getting it right in there and pressing pretty good. If you have thicker brows that try to fight back, you want to go from the opposite <laughs> Look how pointy. You want to go from the opposite direction, like this, so that it stands up and gets underneath each hair, and then go with the grain of the hair, if you decide to do this step at all. Another thing you can just do is keep layering powder and, and white cream paint over it until your, your brows pretty much disappear. That's part of the deal, too. So now, as you can see, I literally have not at all started to really see a skull. I've just drawn myself some marking lines. And I'm going to go in with my black first, because I can. I'm going to use this boy, little guy. Wasn't using him for anything else. And in this particular case, you could easily, I used an eyeliner pencil for this. You could easily do the same thing with a Q-tip dipped into your black cream, right? I could have taken a Q-tip, dipped it in, and done all of this line work. You could do it with anything. You could do it with your concealer stick. You could do it with anything. Um, so I'm going to go in and immediately lose all my brushes. That's pretty normal for me. So remember in class when we were talking about whether to apply a cream product with a brush or with a sponge, and there's pros and cons to both, I very often end up using both in the same application. So right now I'm gonna go in with this boy. See how he looks more like a paintbrush? More like what we think we would use in like a fine arts painting. I'm gonna use him a little bit first, just cause, cause we're showing, we're sharing. I'm just gonna go into the 
points that I'm used to and that I know for sure need to be dark. You can do this too. You're going to do a lot of layers, right? You don't have to sweep it that far back into the hair. I don't have enough hair that I care, so. But if you have hair that is precious to you, do keep in mind you're going to have to, um, when you do get makeup into your hair that's cream-based, you're going to have to shampoo it out. Um, most shampoos are formulated to fight um, grease, basically. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's going to, like, feel nice. And I'm like, anywhere that I can't get in, I'm doing a stabby tap. See that? So that it's going to start to fill in the areas instead of a sweep, a brush sweep, which isn't going to serve me as well. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to fill in these areas. Now I'm going right over my eyes. Your eyelashes will do a pretty good job <laughs> of protecting um, your actual eye from damage. They are there for that, especially incoming things, right? Um, they pretty much exist for that purpose. But I am going to switch to a slightly smaller but still fluffy brush. Look at the texture texture of this boy. He's very fluff. And I'm going to go ahead and instead of swiping, I'm going to do like this kind of dipping motion to get enough product in there that it's going to be useful. Because I was just realizing this area is has small enough little corners and stuff that I wasn't having a great time with the bigger brush. You could do this with your sponge. You could do this with your Q-tip. If you've bought your brushes, you can do it with brushes. Ah, yes. This is a finished look. Everything I've ever wanted my skull makeup to be. You notice how the more I go, the more asymmetricality start to pop out? That's because humans are asymmetrical. And we spend a lot of time and effort in beauty products over the course of our lives, many people. Trying to pretend that we're not, but we are. We all are asymmetrical. I am especially an asymmetrical person because I have much better vision in this eye than this eye. So anytime I get tension and stuff like that, it's more in this eye, which is doing more work or trying to do more work with seeing, um, but is not actually equipped to do that. <laughs> this is how I go out at night. Now I'm going to go ahead and just, just <laughs> nose myself and I'm going back to my bigger brush now. And I'm going to go ahead and I know that this is an area that mostly is going to need to be dark. And notice that I'm not being too, too precious about exactly where my lines were. Again, we're thinking of this as a sketch. We're filling in in the broad strokes first, and then we're going to finesse. Okay. Get under the nose. It's kind of gross. Make sure you wash your brushes after this. Yeah, starting to see it, right? We're starting to see it. And then I'm going to go ahead, because I know myself, and I know that this is a very, very harsh line on me. I'm going to go ahead and start defining it, because I know that's going to happen sooner or later. And see, I just, like, dabbed it in completely the wrong place. That's okay. Good thing with creams. We get to keep blending forever. And ever, and ever, and ever. Now... I also know that I'm going to want to blend this up a little bit into the white, so I'm bringing it actually a little bit higher onto the bone itself, especially here on the chin, because for me, I know that my bone structure, this wiggly, this hard, right on the bone, this not bone, wiggly, right? Is it fun to be spoken to by a skeleton? It's kind of fun for me. So I'm doing over this area because I know that my actual jaw bone, as opposed to the cartilage of my chin, is set further back because of how wiggly this guy is. Coming up a little bit, giving myself some extra product to play and blend with later, coming up a little bit more over my chin. I'm going to very broadly stroke in here. I'm going to blend this a lot. It's not going to be this solid. I'm going to very blend broadly come into that area of my upper temple going into my forehead very just sort of generally not too precise because we're sketching precision it is not yet the time for precision in this type of project and i'm going to start filling in my hairline 
um, depending on what you want to do with your life, you're welcome to avoid your hairline more than this, more than I am. I have long accepted that I'm going to be covered in paint for most of my life, so it doesn't bother me. <sighs> and then I'm going to go ahead. And I'm actually, so your cheekbone goes over top of your jawbone to help create that sense of shadow. I'm going straight across here. Does that make sense? That's my cheekbone. That's my jawbone. This one goes over. So we're going to help to create a shadow there. Kind of starting to see the skull, right? Kind of starting to. And I'm going to make a slightly wider line using this brush. And I'm trying to use different brushes to show you how to use them. So now I'm using this and I'm using it as a thinner brush by using the edge and the tip in a way that's going to help me create the shapes that I know I'm going to want later. I won't use this much for blending, but as you can see, I could if I wanted to, but do you see how much streaking I'm going to get if I do try to do that? It's part of the bucket with uh, brushes like this. You can do it, but they're going to tend to come out paintbrush strokey, right? <sighs> and I'm done! As you can see here, this is actually a very wide line, but because of the overlap of my lip to my chin, it looks thinner than I actually made it. If I'm going to get it higher and go over top of my lips a little bit. That's part of them working with a 3D piece of ourselves. And then, and again, this is ways to create using creams and brushes. This brush is just fine for anything I want to be opaque. And remember I said address the chin or address the neck. So I'm not gonna make myself bony in the neck or anything, but I am gonna start to give myself some like creepy colored in kind of vibes. So why? Why not? Why not? And because I'm assuming I'm going to be wearing this shirt because I'm probably too lazy to change, I'm going to go in and I'm going to mark this is my clavicle right here. This is my actual bone that I can see and feel pretty easily. So I'm going to start filling that in. And see how quick and easy it is to get a big area of the body moderately covered? And we're going to go back and detail it out. We're going to go back and finesse this and cover it more thoroughly everywhere that we're looking. My shirt better stay in this exact same position the rest of this time. I'm going to be mad at my shirt. That's always a useful emotion, right? Go in. Do, do, do. So I've started addressing my neck, right? That did not take me long. That took me like 30 seconds. You can do that too. Feel around in here. Where else? Note there's a little bit less indent here. There's like less, it's lower, so I'm putting a little bit in there. Creating a little bit of sort of this side profile. That was very, very backwards. Uh -huh. We're going to be going back in with white very soon. Yeah. Of course, I wore a shirt that has like an extra strap on it starting to look monstery. It's all I want from my life. So soon, basically what I'm going to do is go ahead and put my first layer of my white. <laughs> and then I'm going to start finessing. And at the time that I start finessing details, that's when I'm going to be pulling in my research. The reason being research is going to help guide me. I can't literally... Please tell me you saw that. Share my pain. I do this for you. I'm going to be very specifically um, aware that as much as I can observe and feel the bones in my face and where they're actually placed, that doesn't mean that I automatically, in my own head, actually know. Oh, it's getting mixed. I knew this would happen. It's going to happen to you too. Just wait. Um, that doesn't mean that I actually literally know what a skeleton looks like off the top of my head perfectly, like a real anatomical skeleton. We all have an idea of what a skull looks like. But a really correct skull, less so, right? Whew. 
it just make this all black? We don't know yet. I don't have dreams. Okay. Ew. It's disgusting. And then this is all going to be teethy. Yeah, don't do this. Don't be me. You can possibly help it. Hmm. Okay. And now I'm going to go back in and do kind of a second layer where I'm noticing, and it's okay, if you get this far and you can't make it better than this, you will be forgiven. Try. Don't get me wrong, try. But I feel like this, probably because I stretched it out more, actually goes up a little bit more dramatically there. I can feel that bone pretty clearly. It's a little bit different on both sides. I can feel that this has a little bit more shadow right there. And all through there and I'm being very organic about this I'm not being like a, I'm not creating any kind of cartoon character but I know eventually I'm gonna want to blend that and I know that all this sooner or later is gonna become teeth and I was gonna leave it blank because I was worried that it's putting white teeth pieces over it's gonna be hard but I've changed my mind, so here we are. Every single step of this feels disgusting, by the way. But good news, we'll have a fun time um, doing our first um, demo of taking this kind of makeup back off, which is an important part of the process. Yeah, and let's look at this and see, do you see when we get closer? This is very nice and opaque in some spots. This is very patchy. That's totally okay. It's kind of nice to work with creams because you can get rid of the patchiness by going over with more and more layers. That's why we're starting with creams. So now, I have two choices. Either I could wash the crap out of this brush. You can use dish soap, you can use makeup remover, you can use a lot of different things. I often use dish soap because it's nice and gentle on these. Both of the brushes I've used no longer gonna help me. What I'm gonna go in with, I think, is this boy. And he is nice and dense. You can kind of see the denseness of him, but at the same time, he's very flexible. So I feel like he's going to be a good blending friend. I could be wrong. I could be totally mistaken. So when we say blending, we don't just mean wiping off what we've already done and starting to blend these colors together so that they're going to look like an organic one piece of, of work as opposed to a patchy mess. P.S. Pretty much every makeup under the sun started out a patchy mess. That's very normal. And he's not doing a great job, is he? I'm not seeing a lot of good blending. So a lot of times with blending, you almost never want to swipe. You want to do a lot of stabby taps. And that's better, right? See how it's kind of turning into less, I just put some product in some places and more of a three-dimensional image of this skull, right? Blending is your friend. I'm going to do that pretty much everywhere. Nowhere is there going to be a point where you have a truly perfect sharp line. Almost nowhere. Maybe in the teeth area. And I'm just going to blend it, blend everywhere pretty much from here. Now your skull is not necessarily going to look like my skull. It probably shouldn't. You're not going to have the same structure. As we start to blend, we start to have more of a cohesive look. And it's going to start to look a little bit more 3D and a little bit less patchy. Can we start to see that a little bit? I actually don't mind the metallic in this lipstick. It's kind of bringing me joy. Um, so I guess that's a note for Marie Kondo or whoever. I'm going to go ahead and get some white in here right across the nose because we know that's a bone. I'm going to down just a touch and specify this just a touch. I've also noticed I want a little bit more of my light tones in here now that I've created, now that I've done some blending. That makes sense? Ooh, ooh. Do, 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 do. You know, normal Friday afternoon. This is what I do with my life, except it actually is. Um, feel free at any time, I should have said this earlier, but feel free at any time to start watching on a higher speed if you just want to watch through the actual steps. I'm trying to say as much stuff as possible that could be useful to you. And I am not blending 
In this case, I'm blending everything everywhere. I'm going to add my highlight highlights later, but in this case, I'm really just getting in there. And notice that glue stick, that's my eyebrow. It did allow us to lose it pretty well so that my eyebrow is almost no longer part of the equation. Okay, now we're going to test out some, I have basically like white eyeshadows that I'm going to try to see how much I can layer them over top of my cream to try to create something. So I'm going in with a new brush again. Do trying to get a lot of white on there and I'm just going to see, does it help? Does it make it worse? <clears throat> Unknown. All your brushes are going to get dirty eventually if you find yourself like in a point where your blending is getting worse rather than better that's probably the point where you want to stop and clean your brushes okay just adding a little bit of powder i'm not sure that that helped me particularly i actually kind of wish i hadn't done it um again normal feeling right and in the process of any makeup application several times at least. I am definitely going to stop and say, gosh, I wish I hadn't done that. Because I lost some of the things that I did like up here. And I didn't gain much. process of creating 3D shapes is always going to finesse that just a little bit, finesse that just a little bit. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to touch around. What do I notice? It's a straighter line than I thought at first right there. That's my bone. That's not. That's my bone. <laughs> I feel like this is like skeleton but tin man which is roughly the story of my life okay yes so i'm gonna go ahead and look up some start looking at some reference images because this is about the point where i've observed my own body a lot um and i'm starting to need to think about what does it look like underneath the skin okay I'm trying to pace through this as slowly as possible, so I'm very sure that this is slow for some of you and for others of you possibly too fast. So try to be aware that I'm trying to pace as well as I can for everyone. So now, right now what I'm going to grab, I'm literally grabbing an eyeliner, uh, this dude, eyeliner marker. Um, but for you, uh, whatever you have available, you could absolutely still do this with, um, with a Q-tip, right? You can see it better when my eyes are closed. So I'm noticing... I'm looking at my reference and feeling my own anatomy. I'm noticing that there's a good secondary shape. So when I say primary shape, secondary shape, tertiary shape, primary shape is the big stuff. We always start with the big stuff. This is a tool in sculpture too. I do a lot of prosthetic sculpture with students. Um, and this is something to notice. Your primary shapes are the big stuff. You got to hammer them in first because if they're wrong, everything else is going to be wrong. Your secondary shapes are starting to capture the littler stuff. Okay. So I'm starting to notice secondary shapes in here. And this is not going on well, P.S. You might be able to see that this black is not going on particularly well. And I'm starting to notice as I look at the image that I have in front of me, some of the things that I kind of noticed as I was working before, but I didn't really know how to articulate them in a way. And I'm gonna start coming back in with this brush and a little bit more of my black that I know works better and start to finesse these shapes. So my cheekbone hasn't gone away, but how we're showing it has changed because of that secondary shape near the eye. What do you mean? A skull. Oh. He will be. He's very dark, right? <laughs> yeah. My partner just walked by and was like, it's a very dark skull. <laughs> He's not wrong. It's fine. And then what also I'm looking here, there is a little bit more of a shadow across this bone, even though this bone does do what I've done. It also has a little bit of a back fade backwards, right? 
there's a little bit of a um, shape here so that there's whiteness around the orbital cavity. So this is the actual orbital cavity itself. This is the inside and this is the spaces that we're developing around it, right? Um, and then I definitely, the one thing I really do wish is that I had a cream white because what I think I may do is go in a little bit with a very pale face shade of a uh, shade of a concealer because in this light, it's going to help me get the lightness that I need in some areas. and reinforce the light areas even though I don't have a white this is a very fair color and now I've gone back to patchy world right because I've added a new layer of products and so I've kind of kept in mind both of the questions what does my actual skeleton do and what is this looking like as an image, as a finished image so far, so far, right? And that's helping me a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and um, I have to blow my nose and this is going to be terrible. It's black. It's not great. Okay. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to do myself a blending blend. Blending is your best friend. When in doubt, blend more. Yeah, that concealer, even though it's not a white white, it did really help. The more we look at it, the more we'll start to realize my face is not symmetrical. And now, I've done some blend, and now I'm going to start establishing my teeth. I'm not going to try to feel, by any means, for each individual tooth. And again, this little squidget, not too far off from doing the exact same thing. with um, <laughs> um, with a q-tip and I know I don't want because I'm going for more of an organic look I know that I don't want my teeth to be too perfect bottom ones tend to be shorter anatomically speaking Okay, so now I've put in some teeth, um, which is the, the joy of my life. I look better than I've ever looked in my entire existence. Now I'm going to start to put in a little bit more of that structure. Because the bone, once we get off the actual nose cavity, does do some pretty specific things in here. I'm looking at one picture of an actual skull and translating those like an actual anatomical image of a skull, not somebody else's skull makeup, and I'm translating those things into what I see looking at myself, okay? Doing a blendy blend. See how every time I go back and blend, it starts to look a little bit more like it's supposed to be there? Rip. Now we've got this boy. And I also see, I'm looking now, I'm switching from a front view to a side view of a skull. Looking at this, and I see 
we've got our little V shape here that happens in most of our bodies. I would say all of our bodies. I'd be very surprised if any of you didn't have that. Um, which is kind of this connector piece right here. Yeah, this concealer is doing okay for me, honestly. And then... Now, I'm still glad, even though I'm going over it with a lighter color now, I'm still very glad that I went in first with the darker tone because what it's doing is giving me something to blend into, okay? And having something to blend into often get, leads to better results. And now, okay, it's like a high point here that I'm looking at on these skulls, like a whitest point kind of there. And you see how I'm not being too particular about trying to stay perfectly within the shapes that I've already created because I could easily have been wrong the first time. So I'm going with what I observe every single time. And right now I'm just sticking a little bit more of this um, concealer shade everywhere that I see highlights that I should be adding. Everything that is a three-dimensional thing is at least three tones. Your center tone, your basically your mid-tone, your highlight, and your shadow. If you're missing one of those things at any point, you're going to start to feel it. And you're going to start to see it. The jawbone is actually a little bit thicker over here than I was thinking it was. You can see that from looking at my reference image. So don't be afraid to make the mistake in the first place and don't be afraid to admit that you made the mistake and correct it, right? So in this area, this is an arch forward. If you think about the way your diatis is shaped, they go sure, not straight across, right? That means that the center of it, of that arch, should be brighter. And I'm just sticking this in any of the areas that should be brighter to help me create the 3D nature of the shapes that I'm looking for. Okay? Now, a lot of the times when we look at a skull makeup that happens online, it's intended to be a very, very clear cartoony, and I don't mean that derogatorily, but a cartoony sort of... Um, graphic representation of a skull. That's not exactly what we're doing here, and it shouldn't be what we're doing here, because that's about what do we think a skull looks like, as opposed to what does your skull look like? How does your skull work, right? Getting a little bit morbid. Morbid. We love it. And then blendy blend then blend blend. Blendy blend 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 blend. And you can see, no matter what you do, even if you're putting solid black and solid white on your face, eventually you're going to be devolving into a variety of shades of gray. Yeah? And that's what should be happening. Okay, now, I'm going to go black in with some of my blacks. This still goes here. It's not quite like that. So we're going to go over this creating shadow by putting some black back into these areas. It's still there, it's just faded out, right? Softened, because it's receding in distance. Most of you should be a shade of gray. Only your very darkest points should ever be hitting true black, and only your very lightest points should ever be hitting true white. So. Still there. Mm -hmm. Now my question about how to get a really good true white on my face. Oh, I haven't blown that at all. Even a little bit. Good me. Go me. Uh, it's still an open question. Because you should be able to achieve some more specificity than what I'm able to achieve from the materials that I have in front of me. So I'm going to go in with, I'm going to try this. I don't think it's going to work, but I'm going to try it. This is a Graftobian brand 
powder? Question mark? Okay. And something there. Try a smaller brush. I've been going back and forth between this brush. I have a, a little rag on my leg and I'm wiping it off. Um, which means that I am getting some different colors in my products. If you want to really preserve the purity of your products as they are on the plate, don't do that. If you don't care, maybe do do that. Okay. And then around here, once you've got your shapes in, you could start doing things like looking at maybe, um, other actual makeups of a skull. Right? But you can see that what I've done is not necessarily what you might think of when you think a skull makeup, because it's not um, as sort of uh, like comic graphic style based. It's a little bit more organic in structure. A lot of my makeup practice is built on very organic shapes. That doesn't mean yours has to be. So feel free to play with style. If you want to go in there and get more like specific. I'm adding in shapes where there's not meant to be true black or true white. I'm mixing pretty much with every step here. The one thing I wish I had is a true white to get some of this. There's a couple high points that aren't popping out as much as I would love to be able to pop them out. Um, but we might all just have to live with that. And what I want now, oh, how do I achieve what I want? <laughs> Life question. Um, she says, knowing perfectly well that I don't have a true white anywhere in here, but I'm still looking. Definition of insanity, right? Uh, Um, this is a white paint marker, not for my face. What I will do, though, is I'm going to grab, and you could do this with a Q-tip, I'm going to grab a very, very thin brush. I love something like this where it's very, very thin from the sides. Thin, flat. And I'm going to go in with my black pot in my absolute darkest detail points. that shouldn't be blended. Does that make sense? Areas where there is a sharp line that shouldn't be blended. I'm going to go ahead and start finessing those. The eye socket is going to be the big one. The shape that I've already created for myself. That should be a clean line. See how I've drawn my eye sockets a little bit uneven? That's because that's how I feel them when I feel in there. A little bit of a dark point right here. Right here. Right here. Hollow that in. Hollow it out. So starting to define what actually feels like bones, right? Not just the blendy areas, but the real sort of clarity of structure versus not structure. And we're starting to see it a little bit. I really wish I didn't have to blow my nose so badly. Here we are. And again, style-wise, I'm going for something fairly organic that has that sense of like, um, like more of a watercolor. Um, because a lot of what I do is organic, monstery characters. Uh, and these types of paint techniques are very useful for like organic creature skin tone, style like this. 
not as useful. Yeah, I'm starting to not hate that a little bit. See how up here on the forehead area, it's been a lot of give and take for me, where I've done something, kind of added a little bit more. Getting your blending right is always going to be quite the back and forth kind of extravaganza. And you're going to have to go back in, add some more, add some more, right? <sighs> and this bone is so very like little and thin. The actual cheekbone is so small. I'm going to go back in with one of my brushes that I've been using for blending. Blend, blend, blend. Blend, blend, blend. You could do this perfectly well with a sponge. But these areas where I have specifically gone in to add specific structure, I will not be blending with a larger brush. I will go back in with my... This one. And blend from those points. But I'm not going to blend back over the line of the bones, right? Necessarily. I might. We don't know. I've got dreams. And very, very soon, I'm going to cut myself off. The reason for that being um, that I don't want to... I could demo any particular thing forever. If I was doing this on a performer with a specific deadline, I would always have done a sample of it, and I would always have a sense of how long it's going to take in reality, so that I could schedule that time with the PA or the stage manager, etc. In this case, I'm cutting myself off because I'm not trying to give you something that you can't accomplish, right? Okay. Mm, yeah. Don't love it. Don't adore it, but I'm also jet lagged and cranky. So that could be part of that. Do you see how here we've got some streaking just from the brush? For me, that's okay. I would encourage you to really look at your streaking. Think about how good does it look from here? How good does it look from here, right? I'm leaving some of that on my nose because I had to blow my nose. Oh well, we live on planet Earth. I would usually, other things that I would do if I didn't want to cut myself off and allow you to not have to spend more time watching a demo and more time working on your piece. Um, but I would definitely usually go in... Yeah, if you, you have real whites, you will have more defined whites than what you see on me right now, and that is okay. I would go in and define the teeth some more. I would black out the nose some more. Um, and I would keep looking at my reference images specifically to this side because I'm not super happy with this side yet. I'm not going to black out my ears, mostly because I don't need to. I am going to try one more time to get this freaking area to fill in which would be a billion times easier if I had a real right white here with me and then I'm gonna go in <laughs> never sneeze in makeup Yeah, see, I could keep, I could literally, like, there's no, it's like a, like, a, like with painting, there's no actual end, there's just when you stop. Um, so I am in a, just a second to force myself to stop. Yeah, okay, so we've got something. I hope that this is helpful to you. As you can see, this is not the moment that we're looking for perfection, alright? That's what I want to emphasize for you. Bless me. Um, but we are looking for observation of your face, and I'm demoing this on purpose without having planned it out ahead of time, 
to give you some context for what I'm hoping to see from you. We are not looking for perfection. If you achieve perfection, good on you. But most of us are in a beginning point and that's what we're trying to work with. You will have brighter whites than I've been able to achieve. I'm literally using a very fair skin tone, not a white, right? Close my eyes and see what we got so far. That's what it is. And I'm going to come back in a little bit and I will um, go ahead and give you a super quick demo on how to um, take this all back off of your face. All right. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I've already been wiping some of this away. So the big question starts to be, how the heck do we get all this crap off our face? Oil-based products. This is literally, this is a lip balm, uh, ball, ball, dude. Um, getting a chunk of a creamy product. Cold cream. Even your moisturizer will literally help get this off your face. My hands are gross and oily now. <laughs> and the first thing it's gonna do is munge it all together and mix it all together and loosen it from your actual face you're gonna want to grab a towel i recommend um a soft towel old t-shirt i have a face bag um because if you're using something like a uh, like paper towels, for example, it's going to get really rough on your face over time. It's going to start to become very, very, uh, yeah, very, very rough on your face. It will not be kind to you. And then I'm going to keep going and you repeat this process a few times. Now, as you can see, I've gone a little bit into the roots of my hair. I would recommend leaving that for, uh, um, for your shower. Your shampoo will take care of that pretty well because none of these are meant to uh, stay on the face. I'm going to go in one more time with my oily product. Get in my eyes a little bit more. This is like a, a lip balm with like mint in it. So that, that does not feel awesome. But you know, you're melting it off. Oil always degrades other makeup including and especially oil-based makeup. And trust me when I say if I was doing this with like makeup wipes from the store, I would still, <laughs> I, I would not have a face right now. Um, I would still be rubbing it like the first layer. And then it's smart, you know, to go ahead and plan, um, plan a shower for after something like this, absolutely. Um, but you should at least be able to get it down to the point where you can be seen in public. All right, that's how you do it. Um, I want to say one more time, I tried specifically to make this a manageable menthol in my eyeballs. Oh. I tried specifically to make this a manageable challenge for you. And I tried to go at not a super rapid pace so that you could see how I'm doing each step. You can go for a more cartoonized version. You can go for something more organic and painty. You should have more of a skull appearance than I did in my makeup because you have an actual white, all right? So you're going to want to build up your highlights and highest points a whole lot more. Observe your face, then bring in your reference images and do the best that you can with the tools that you have available to you right now. And you're going to be just fine, all right? I believe in you. I do. I believe in you.